it. We're staying here. But we are we're staying showing here. something else. We're, we're moving on to a new segment. Uh, so. So we are showing our capstone game, Dawn. This is a world premiere exclusive yes. uh, demo of the, our game, Dawn. So, so why don't you tell the audience a bit about the the whole capstone system and how we ended up with this game while we get loaded here. Definitely. So uh, I am the game designer on our project, so it was my responsibility to uh, bring all of the creative ideas together for our entire team and kind of guide people in the right direction from a creative perspective. And uh, the Capstone game is the culmination of all the team game projects that we do here at Guildhall. Mm -hmm. We start with a small team of four or five people, move up to a more medium-sized team of uh, eight to ten, and then we have a large capstone experience where there's multiple people in each department of art, programming, level design, and production. Yep. Um, and uh, our game, in particular, uh, was born out of a pitch for a hack and slash game. And you were part of that pitch, right? I was part of that pitch team. We got very excited about the idea of rebirth and Ooh. revitalization. And, Hold uh, that the thought, game, we're live. Thank you. Uh, so, our game is all about rebirth and bringing life to the world. In the beginning of the game, you see this tree that has uh, lost all of its life, all of its energy, and on that tree is a single acorn. Uh, this acorn falls loose of the tree due to a force of wind magic of sorts, and it gives rise to Ash. Ash is our druid uh, creature character. She uses the power of nature and wind in order to uh, manipulate things in her environment. Uh, as I said earlier, it started as a hack and slash game. Part of the amazing, uh, amazing things of the game development process is that games can change form very, very radically. Uh, yes. We discovered that a uh, hack and slash game was very out of scope for <laughs> our time allotted, which was only about six months, mm -hmm. and the experience of our developers involved. Uh, so we went through a couple of different uh, changes, trying to find ourselves as a game. Yep. And what we came up with was actually a more artistically driven platformer game. Uh, we bill it as a atmospheric platformer. Yes. Uh, we're inspired by the work of that game company and uh, specifically Journey, Flower, uh, Brine, I believe, is another game that we were referencing mm -hmm. a fair bit. And for those who don't know, that game company is the name of the company. It's yes. not just yes. we're <laughs> referring to it as that game company. All one word, too, yes. by the way. Uh, so here you can see Andrew, he's starting in an area with a great view of the tree, kind of giving him a view of where to go, and right in front of him is this glowing crystal that's inviting the player to go toward it. And if Andrew hits the button on screen, uh, he interacts with it, and Ash's magic brings the crystal to life and forms together into this magical device that shoots concentrated light out forward. Uh, and manipulates the environment, opening a path for Ash to walk forward. So the, the purpose of the game is to guide this sunlight all the way through the world to get it to the tree. Yes, definitely. And we actually have a side objective too in Dawn. We do. These uh, little collectible flowers, if you uh, use the interactability on them, they will come back to life and bloom in a beautiful shower of sparks. And uh, there are 23 of them in the game, and if the player collects all 23, then they unlock a alternate uh, skin for mm -hmm. Ash, which we call the Autumn Skin, if this is Ash's Spring Skin. Uh, it's more orange. It's a fantastic little reimagining of the character. So for all those uh, achievers out there, you know, you might want to take notes because I'm going to try to find all the flowers that I can. I don't know if we have enough time for that, but you can certainly try. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> On our team, we have a uh, tradition of trying to speed run the game as fast as humanly possible. I believe one of our, either one of our programmers or one of our artists has the record right now. Uh, so here, Andrew finds another uh, mechanic. It's a vine that's shooting out of the ground. It, the fireflies get excited when Ash goes near them, and if he uses the interactability, Ash actually causes the vine to grow and create a new path forward. It's very cool. And there is a flower down there, but it's a bit off the beam path, so I'm going to go ahead and skip it. Oh, so we're, we're giving up on that. So. Yeah, you kind of psyched me out there. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we've 
been in development for uh, since June and we've been working for about 20 hours a week. Our team is made up of some fantastic people, uh, I believe five level designers, five artists, five programmers is uh, about where we're at. Six level designers. Six level designers, yeah. apologies guys. Everything else is correct though. Yeah, uh, it's good that I eventually, you know, figure out how many people are on the team. <laughs> <laughs> and also our usability producer, Mitchell. Yes, of course. Oh, oh fantastic. Wow. Thank you to the anonymous $50 donor. Uh, that's a fantastic way to start the day. Yeah, we're kicking it off. Yeah. Uh, we're going we're gonna to set the tone for the entire rest of yeah. the day, actually. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, okay, cool. So, um, yesterday I was interviewing a lot of the newer students about their TGP1 games. And yeah. I, I asked all of them if they had any advice for people that were looking to get into game development. And a lot of them were saying that you have to really keep an open mind, not just in terms of the ideas that form across a project, but also for yourself, like being willing to um, push yourself and do things you didn't think you could. And I couldn't think of a better person that embodies <laughs> that than you. So can you talk about your kind of unique circumstance in Capstone? Uh, I definitely can. So uh, as we alluded to earlier with our opening uh, dialogue, I am actually in the production track. So my trade is in managing projects and kind of keeping teams moving, keeping the gears turning. And uh, for Capstone, I was invited to be a game designer, which is literally the opposite side of the coin <laughs> of being a producer. And uh, that was a very different experience uh, because it's using the opposite side of your brain, it's using a very different skill set, but at the same time it's using a very similar skill set. Yeah. Uh, because a lot of being a game designer and really a lot of being a good game developer is all about communication. So uh, I would say that one of the biggest things that I would advise anyone who's looking at getting into game development is Make sure you work on your communication skills. Make sure you work with all different kinds of people from all walks of life, because it will only help you understand their perspective and how to talk to them, uh, whether you're working with them in a managerial capacity as a producer or as an art lead, uh, or just working as a fellow programmer, trying to communicate across from one person to another on a different side of the team. Yeah. Um, communication is a must, must, must. Unless you are an absolute savant, like <laughs> Toby Fox or Notch, you're going to have to collaborate with people at some point. Yes, they are very much the exception rather than the norm. But then yeah. again, eventually Notch does still yeah, prove to interact now, with yeah. some people because mm -hmm. uh, Minecraft went on to be very successful and sold to Microsoft. And I assume that there was some communication that went on in and that negotiation. It must have been. Yeah. And we got a question here. How do you make sure players go the right way? That's an actual perfect segment because I was gonna I was gonna show this actually. This is one of my favorite little effects in the game. These are our landmark pieces, and those also interact with Ash's activate ability. And they you see that little ball of light that's coming out of it. It it leaves a trail that will go to where the player needs to go. So I'm gonna it's leading me up here to that vine. So so that is one way that we try and get players to go in the correct direction. Other ways include, uh, you the can see itself. the tree itself as a big landmark in the distance. It's always important when you're designing games to keep in mind the sight lines of what the players are seeing and where they're going. Uh, I can't reference it right now, but I will in a moment. The, if you look at the ground uh, that is not on the vines, uh, you can actually see we've drawn a little path mm -hmm. to give players a almost subliminal this is the direction you should go. This is the critical path to your goal. Um, and then in addition to that, we even have uh, different, uh, we even have different um, lighting settings that accentuate different areas as well as uh, foliage that uh, different types of plants are around different mechanics. So there's a lot of little things that we do to try and get into the player's subconscious where they're trying to go. That, that's because one of the core pieces of our game is show, don't tell. We want yeah. to show the story and let the player draw their own precise conclusions rather than uh, do all the explaining for them. It's sort of like the sum of many subtle little parts. Definitely. I think. We actually have another question. Keep the questions going, guys. I love this. Yeah, thank you. Can you talk about the original music for Dawn and other Guildhall-designed games? 
Uh, so I can definitely talk about the experience for music for the games that I've worked on here at Guildhall. Um, so I come actually from a technical theater background, mm -hmm. so I know a decent number of composers and sound people. Uh, I was a sound person in a previous life. And uh, the music for Dawn is composed by a young man by the name of Joseph Schaefer. I cannot recommend him enough. Joseph, if you're watching, you are my favorite, and our game would not be nearly as impactful as it is without you. Yes, I really uh, love the music in Dawn. It's yes. so good. Uh, so Joseph is a friend of mine, and he and I worked together in the past, uh, and so going back to that communication idea and networking with people, uh, know people who are good at things, know all sorts of kind of people. Um, That's but, sort of something we have to self-organize at Guildhall because we we don't have any kind of official audio department, so yeah. that responsibility often falls to the producers and the designers um, to sort of find find music and sound effects and make sure they are what the the vision really calls for. Yeah. So even so, we had a composer for this game. Uh, other solutions that students have done in the past include going to stock music websites or uh, even creating atmospheric little things of their own accord. So Andrew is just about at the end of the game. We have a little bit of a uh, twist in the mechanics here in the last area, whereas up until now, the player has been activating uh, one touchstone at a time. Those are those little yellow crystals. Uh, we call them touchstones. Uh, now we get into this small arena where the player has three at once. The sunlight has split into three pieces, and... Uh, so if I try to go forward now... You can try. It's too far away. What do I do? <laughs> I have to go back. And the reason why we did this is uh, largely to give the player a sense of, oh, they're reaching the end. This is a special place. And uh, between the multiple touchstones they have to activate, as well as being right up on the tree, this massive tree giving a huge sense of scale and importance, uh, it's very clear we're reaching toward the end of the game. And you'll see in a little bit why we have so much sunlight heading towards the tree. Yeah. So sunlight in our game is a force of life. Uh, so what better way to restore life to the tree through, than through the force of sunlight? Yes. So here we go. You guys All ready? Right. It's pretty cool. <laughs> this is my favorite part. <laughs> What's your favorite part? Comment below. <laughs> you haven't done your streamer voice yet. <laughs> I have too much self-respect. If you want to hear Andrew do his streamer voice, donate. Then he'll have to. Yeah, I'll be, you ha you'll have a couple opportunities to get me to do that. <laughs> it's great. You should do it. So you just saw a really cool particle effect by our effects designer, Justin Peterson. Um, so the sunlight comes together at the tree into this huge fiery ball. Yeah, it ignites a star almost. And yeah. all of the magical force is spread out into the area around. And the forces of nature are encouraging Ash to go towards uh, this final flower, this jump flower that you've been using throughout the level. So I'm like, we're in a crazy, beautiful snow globe here. Yes, very special place, designed by our own uh, Sean Abigail, who you will see in a couple minutes playing Depth. Yes. So I'm going to take this special looking flower, triggering the, f the final cutscene. We have a different soundtrack at this point, right? Uh, yes, once you hit the... We have we use a program called WISE to queue up different sound cues, different pieces of music as the player goes through the levels. It, so the music evolves dynamically as the player goes through the game. Mm -hmm. And now that uh, between the sunlight and Ash's own uh, magic, the tree is restored to life and all is as it should be in the world. The cycle begins anew. Yes. All of this has happened before, and all of this will happen again. <laughs> yes, until the end of time. So that is Dawn. Yes. Uh, we actually have a little bit of time left, so I can keep playing, uh, um, and we can sure. answer some questions that we have. Sure. Uh, do you have any questions? I've, I've been talking a lot. I don't know if you've had any other questions on your mind that you want the viewers to potentially know. Oh, man. There's just so much you could talk about when it comes to Capstone. I think all of us, we're, we're actually uh, headed into our beta tomorrow. Yes, um, we have a big milestone tomorrow. 
So the game is effectively com complete, and we're going to spend another week putting together marketing materials and making sure all the last-minute important bugs get fixed. Um, and at that point, it's sort of out of our hands, and we're we're hoping that our faculty gives us the go-ahead to put this guy on Steam Greenlight. Yes, we are hopeful that we can get our game onto Steam Greenlight, so uh, we will be more than happy to let you all know when that happens and yes. vote for us. We want to get. If up you there. think we're annoying, plugging Extra Life, just wait until we're trying <laughs> to plug our game on Steam. And also, also please support our friends, our other cohort friends, yes. uh, Mouse Playhouse. They're making Guildhall's first ever VR game. It is a adorable, adorable game. Mm -hmm. It is fantastic. We showcased it yesterday. So if you're interested in seeing it, uh, go to SMU Guildhall's Twitch page and look at yesterday's stream. It's in about the first 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, should be pretty easy to find. One thing I would like to fix during our jam is this load time. I don't know about you. <laughs> that that would be nice. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, unless uh, there are some more questions coming in on the stream, I think we're we, we should probably start wrapping up. And, okay. Uh, so that is our capstone game, Dawn. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, once again, 